Hello, everybody, um, and welcome to this webinar. We will be starting in a couple of minutes. We'll just let the last few people um, come and join before I make a start. Just one more minute and then I'll make a start. So thank you very much for joining us this morning. Just letting the last couple of people in. Few more seconds, and then we will make a start. So, welcome everybody this morning to this presentation on the Fit to Bid uh, program, and I am going to be talking to you this morning about um marketing to tier one and tier two suppliers in the b2b uh, arena so i'll just run through the agenda just to give you an idea of what we we're going to go through and then i'll give an introduction to myself and then we'll be going full throttle into the main presentation so today i'm going to be covering a gentle introduction to um to today's session how to get a great uh, profile on LinkedIn, how we're we going to use LinkedIn to create some introductions, what approach you need to take in order to be able to market and reach and uh, the tier one and tier two um, companies within the Hammersmith and Fulham area, how to get your messaging right and what to do next. How do you connect, build relationships and how can you create a presence on LinkedIn. So this whole presentation is around using LinkedIn as a great tool to help your sales and marketing process to reach these bigger companies in the Fulham and Hammersmith area. So a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Nicola Ryle. I'm responsible for marketing strategy at Brandly and Business Support. And uh, Brandwin is um, providing the a whole suite of different webinars over the, um, well, actually started and running for another uh, couple of months. And we're also providing some business advice, um, which I will talk about a little bit more later in uh, the webinar. So a little bit about me. I started working uh, in, in government, so I know something about government. The building research establishment is based in Watford. I then went and cut my teeth a little bit more at American Express and Coca-Cola before leaving to set up my own um, marketing agency. And then I um, also started running my father's business. So I've ended up running two businesses simultaneously. KI Distribution Center is a global supplier of psychometric measures. So I have been using my marketing to promote that as well. So I have a lot of experience of running my own businesses as well as marketing and doing sales uh, in the business to business environment. Often smaller businesses trying to sell to bigger businesses, which is why the fit is very good. Um, I can't remember now, but it may be uh, 15 years ago that myself and some colleagues started up Brandwin Business Support, which is a, um, a network of individuals who bring the best business support to SMEs in the southeast of England. We are one of the premier um, deliverers of that kind of service. Right. 
So that's enough about me. What I would like to do now is to move on to the power of LinkedIn. So many people are unaware of how brilliant a tool it is. Now, I have to emphasize it's a tool. It's not a magic box. So you've still got to do some work to make it do the magic. Um, and what I'm going to do today is tell you what magic you need to do um, and how you're going to use it to get it to do what you want. So without more ado, a little bit about LinkedIn. It was started 2003 as a job market, literally just introducing employers to employees and vice versa. And it was an opportunity basically to upload your CV and hopefully tout for some, some work or alternatively for an employer to go along there and have a little look to see who is out there in their locality. That's what it started. It grew exponentially. And amazingly now, it has got 850 million members in over 200 countries currently, which is an extraordinary statistic. Every time I talk about LinkedIn, I have to go and check the stats because an extra 20, 30, 40, 50 million people have signed on. And I guess it's going to top a billion very shortly, which is one eighth of the entire planet's population. So it's a great resource and it's a powerful database. It must be one of the most powerful databases in the world. OK, so the top countries that are using it, as you might expect, would be America, India and China. But they've got massive population in comparison with the UK. So if we look at the UK's penetration, 23 million people on, um, on LinkedIn, that's a very large percentage of all business people in this country. Um, so if you want to find out who the person is, who is um, the top chap or lady in a particular business, this is the place to come and have a little look. So you're wanting to grow your network and to be and to introduce yourselves to your prospective customers. Well, this is the place to find them. What's important about LinkedIn in comparison with any other social media platform, it's 250% more effective for B2B selling than any other social media platform. It is fantastic for creating leads and opportunities. The other thing that you need to be aware of is that before a meeting, particularly with these larger companies, you can expect that 95% of those individuals will check your profile before meeting you. Or if they meet you at something like a networking event or a meet the buyer kind of an event, they will go and check you out on LinkedIn. So it's really important that you've got your best foot forward on that platform and that you utilize it well. Okay, so within one mile of the town hall of Hammersmith, now I'm not quite sure whether I can see the chat here, so I'm a little bit dependent on Lisa or Nelsa helping out potentially. Um, but has anybody got any idea, if you have, pop it in the chat, um, of how many people are in one mile of the town hall of um, Hammersmith on LinkedIn? Just pop it in the chat if you think that you have an idea. Go on, you can do this. Pop in the chat what you think the um are the number of people in 5000 thank you michael that was very brave of you fantastic any further takers are over 5000 or less than 5000 i will give you a little hint it's more than 5000 anyone else brave enough 15000 excellent any further takers above 15000 I'd like one other person to be brave enough to stick their neck out and say what they think. Go for it. Nobody brave? Okay, I shall tell you. So 
This is approximately the area. And there are 170,000 members within one mile of the town hall of Hammersmith. Wow, that's extraordinary. But you say, maybe they're all just very young people who are low, um, uh, only just beginning on their, um, uh, on their career. So they aren't of any interest to me. Wrong. 64,000 of those are at a very senior level. And so this is why this is such a useful tool to you. So if I want to find out who the principal buyer at L'Oreal is, I can just look it up on this system and find out his or her name. Okay, so do I use it? I use it all the time. So my office is in Hertfordshire, in Chorleywood. And a few years ago, I decided it was ridiculous. I was traveling all over the country to meet with clients and wouldn't it be much better for the environment and for the wear and tear on me if I only um, was traveling nice and close? So I decided to have a little look on LinkedIn to see what was going on. So from my office in Hertfordshire, within five miles, there's 47,000 members. And I live in a relatively rural area. That doesn't, it's, it's more than five miles to Watford or to Uxbridge, which are the two biggest towns. So that's not even getting there. 390,000 members within 10 miles and over 50,000 of those are either my personal first connection or they're a connection of somebody I already know. 50,000 people. So I can go to a friend who I know well and say, I see you're connected to the buyer at L'Oreal, please would you make me an introduction if I found that piece of information out? And that's the good thing about LinkedIn. You can find out that bit of information. Over 20,000 of those are decision makers. So they're the right people for me to be talking to, but watch out for spelling mistakes on your own profile. 42 are managing directors not managing directors. So please do a quick spell check um, before you um, finish it off your profile. That's just a little hint. Okay, so moving on. There's two types of profile available on LinkedIn. There's a corporate one or a company one, and I have an example here of one. This is my father's business. Okay, or there's a personal profile. And I'm just going to have a quick look at which is best and which one's going to help you more. Because it's not always clear to people. So let's have a look. From a personal point of view, those are, you have connections and that's people to people connections. So that makes it personable. Whereas on a company, you have followers. Now that's somebody who's actually put their hand up and said, I'm interested in the company. I know what's, I want to know what's going on. So they tend to be a bit more keen than your connections to find out about things. So that would be an argument why the company one would be better. However, LinkedIn has a preference for posts which are done on a personal profile versus a company profile. Now you may think that if you post something, Everybody can see it. That's not true. It, it gets shown to particular walls, or that's the profiles, of specific individuals. So if I post on my personal profile, it will show it to between 8 and 17% of my personal connections. Whereas if I post on my company profile, it only gets shown to between 2 and 8% on average. And one of the things we're going to talk about later is how you move it from the lower end to the upper end of that when you put a post down. Your personal one typically is more personal and you can be more personal in style, whereas on the company one is much more corporate and you tend to have to use more formal language. On a personal one, you can be more opinionated, you can express your own in, um, opinions, but be careful not to be too controversial. You can be more relaxed and you can be more engaging. 
And that's a very powerful thing when you're using a social platform. On a corporate page, you may have to be much more holding the company line, the brand lines. On the personal one, you've got space to put lots and lots of information, whereas on the company one, you really don't. It's only a small summary. So there is less uh, latitude to talk um, on your profile to give the information you want to share. The company one is not as good for lead generation. And the reason for this is very simple. People buy from people. They want that personal interaction and they feel like they will get it on a personal profile, whereas they don't feel that they get it on a company profile. So if you want, if you want to choose only one platform to use for lead generation, you go for the personal one. A balance between the two may be the best, in which case I typically do two to three on the posts and interactions on the personal one to every one that I do on the company one. So LinkedIn does push company pages, but as yet, it's really not worth the powder and shot in a big way. Okay, so let's think about the advantages and disadvantages of using LinkedIn over regular networking. It's really, really important that when you're networking in a virtual environment, that you behave as yourself, that it's, it's a real thing. So just as you would in, um, in a networking environment when you might go in, you need to smile, you need to be friendly, you need to chat to people, but what's really important is to follow up. We all know, or we may know, or remember that in marketing terms or sales process terms, you need what they call six touches, which means that if you've only met somebody once, you're unlikely to sell to them. But if you meet, interact, telephone, email, what have you, six times, that's very, very much more likely. So on average, it takes six touches, as we call them, to make your sale. So following up is crucial because that's only one point. So the advantages of virtual networking are many fold. One, you can give loads of information. When you're meeting it uh, in the flesh from face to face, all you can do is talk a little bit and you don't have that much time. Whereas this, you can really go into a lot of detail. You can use it when you want to. If I fancy, you know, contacting somebody at 11 o'clock at night, they might not be switched on, but I can do that at night. I can, I can set posts up to go at a different time if I want to. I don't, I am not forced to the time when the networking event has started. It's a searchable um, um, database effectively. So when you go into a networking room, you've got to work out who you want to speak to and you've got no information whatsoever to do that with. LinkedIn allows you to do that. It's great if you're a little bit shy. You know, networking events can be quite daunting for some people. You can keep it up to date, which, you know, business card and things like that, you can't very easily. And it's always there, 24-7. And this is a bug in it, it collapses, but that's very rare. Generally speaking, you can always find it alive and there and for you to use and um, utilise. So... This is your opportunity on your LinkedIn profile to demonstrate your brilliance, your experience, your knowledge, why people should be using you. you. Are there any disadvantages? Sadly, there are a few, but they're small. One is that people can't see you so well. Your smile, your charm is hidden, your open body language isn't there, so it's much more difficult to get that uh, personality off the page and into somebody else's um, desktop. The person looking at it needs to sift through quite a lot of information. So you need to make sure that the bits you really want them to see are highlighted and easy to locate. You need to keep it up to date. So many people will set up their LinkedIn profile and never look at it again for 
years, literally years. Um, I certainly went along to, um, uh, to give a presentation at a big company and somebody said, should I update my, my, uh, pro uh, my profile picture? And I looked at his profile picture and I would have walked past him in the street because the person in the picture on LinkedIn was 10 years younger and didn't have a beard and wasn't wearing glasses. I mean, the difference was huge wouldn't have recognized him. So it's really important that the profile picture is kept up to date and your details are kept up to date. Maybe your company is doing something different now. It does have software updates. So for example, this morning, I was looking at what I was going to tell you about today and they moved a button because I'm going to do a live demonstration in a bit. They moved a button and I couldn't find it. I was so glad that I looked at it before because very often, I don't because I think I know what I'm doing. And then somebody moves something around and you spend some time searching for it. When they do the updates, sometimes they introduce some bugs and you think you, um, uh, that you've broken it and you haven't. Just switch it off, go and make a cup of tea, come back later. It's probably going to be fixed because it employs a lot of people. Can find US geography a little bit difficult, but that's improving. It's improved all of the time. Okay. So, is my profile important? Well, I'm hoping I've already convinced you that it is, simply because, as I said before a meeting, 95% of people are going to look at you uh, online in LinkedIn. It is as important as your website. Um, and for many people, it's more important than their website, for example, if you work in consultancy. So here's an example. Um, this is an example for, uh, where I just put in people who work at Heathrow Airport. And I was interested to see what it threw up. So this is a search result. And you can see from here, it gives me lots of information. It gives me a nice picture. It gives me the person's name, tells me what they do. This is taken straight from the title, where they work, and whether or not um, I've got some shared connections with them. And then LinkedIn invites me either to connect with them or perhaps to message them. Now, there's a couple of people here who haven't even got a picture, so I have no idea whether I know them. I certainly am not going to recognize them. Uh, they are hiding under a bushel somewhere. So I'm not impressed with that. This lady here, I can barely see. I'm not quite sure what's going on here, but I suspect this is a man at work because I have a feeling he's in the air traffic control tower somewhere. So it's really important. People judge you from this page and they start off by judging you from your photograph, which is why it is the most important thing on your profile. It is crucial to get this one right. So please listen to me and you'll probably want to go away and get another one done unless you've had it done professionally. What is crucial about this? Well, let me start off. People like to buy from people. We've already talked about this. So this isn't a person, it's an icon. And I don't feel warm towards that photo and I suspect you don't either. So that's a big no-no. Make sure you have something there, even if it isn't with you looking your best. Avoid holiday snaps. So this is a true story. Um, I used to work for a really, really big company, had turned over 250 million pounds in central London. The procurement office told me that when they're looking at tenders, they look at the LinkedIn profile of the owners. And if they're on a yacht, as this gentleman is, which they think might be owned by them, they think, oh, we're going to be paying well over the odds for loss and for a discount. If they are photographed um, at outside the garden shed, for example, and I do know somebody who's done that, they think they don't care. They have no professional integrity. They're not bothered about what image they give. And that's not the kind of supplier I want. So those tenders very often get down weighted if they make it through at all. So that's a true story which somebody told me. So be aware that, that this is really important to get right. Okay, so you're not at a wedding. This is a business platform. It is not a dating agency. I know people want to look their best. 
but you're not selling um, um, a partnership here of that nature. Sometimes people put their own logo in. It's, this is a personal profile. That's a corporate identity. So that appears on your corporate page. This is getting better because it looks a little bit more professional, but he's fading into the background there and it's very difficult to see features. At least he seems to be smiling. I'm not quite sure what this lady was thinking of, but I do think that's a very professional looking environment that she was in. This is getting better. Now, the thing with this photo, the only thing which is wrong with that photo is a little bit far away. And what we want, what you want is for the person who is going to buy from you to look you right in the eyes and think, that is a person I can do business with. So to generate trust, to generate integrity, to generate credibility, they need to be able to see your features well. And the important features are your eyes and your smile. And this is a lovely colleague of mine at Brandon, Elsa. She may well be doing one of the other presentations. I'm absolutely certain she would be fabulous, a, a business advisor. Doesn't she look warm? Doesn't she look friendly? And just to show that I'm not scared to put my own photo up, here is mine. And you can see I've removed anything in the background to make my face stand out. And I don't generally wear makeup, as you can see. Today, I'm not wearing makeup. But for LinkedIn, I put some makeup on because it highlights my features. So you can now begin to see how you might put your portrait together so that it's perfect. OK, so those are my tips on, um, uh, on a, a LinkedIn profile. And by the way, this green dot just means that he was online when I took that photo. And another tip is that nowadays there's an option to turn this picture into live video, which you can upload. I'm not sure of the worth of that. So experiment if you want to, but the most important thing is to get a uh, photo there as soon as possible, which is of a high standard. Okay, so the next thing that people often don't realize with their LinkedIn profile is that behind your head is another opportunity to have a lovely picture. Now, a picture says a thousand words. So using good pictures on LinkedIn really lifts your profile and makes it much more interesting. So this is a photo that we have loaded up behind Graham's head here. And what's interesting about it is it is made out of four different pictures. Okay, so we've introduced his logo just above his head, where there's a little space. Then we have shown his product, which is this big display board here. Then we've put a really important selling point. Here's the ISO 14001 accredited, which means that he's environmentally friendly, which is really unusual in the printing industry. So therefore, um, museums and places like that, governments who need print done are always looking for it. So it was a really big selling point. And finally, we added the picture of the woman at the front. She was not actually there at all. This is to give it perspective, but more importantly, to make it engaging. And that is so important. OK, so make use of that space there. The other thing you can see is that when you go onto LinkedIn, your eye is drawn to the top of the page, which is this. So make sure it looks fantastic. And then the next thing you want to do is to make sure that the information about you is clear. So it's showing a little bit more about you as an individual, because it takes a while before people go down the page. OK, so your title. You can have something like this, which is CEO at the ABC Group. This tells me nothing about your expertise, your knowledge, who your clients are. It doesn't tell me anything. And that's the bit that appears just beneath your name in big letters. And it's what appears also on any search. So you want this little bit 
to be a very useful bit of real estate to advertise yourself, your services, your company. So what I recommend you do is something a little bit different. This is the second one, same business. MD tells you the rank, specialist tells you he's good. In Wi-Fi networks, energy saving, structured IT, cabling, EV points and electrical contracting tells you what he does. So in that particular instance, you've got immediately clarity as to uh, seniority, expertise, and what he can deliver you. So my tips for your title would be use some search terms because LinkedIn uses a search engine to show you uh, search results when you're looking for something. Bear in mind, your prospects might do the same. Show your expertise, explain clearly, very simply, what you do. So have a quick little think about that for you. Really important to get that right. Okay, so that's the title. That's the top part of your profile. The next part of your profile, immediately underneath or fairly shortly, or you can move it up because those sections move around, is your summary. It's the about you. On a CV, you would call that sort of the, the bit that comes at the top, which says how dynamic and wonderful you are in every respect. And that's the point. Typically, we, we start off by saying, I'm good at this, I'm fantastic, we do this, we deliver that, we're the foremost in our area. Clients, prospects aren't interested in that. What they want to know is, what can you do for them? And here is an example of somebody who talks about himself. Mike set up this business in 1993 as an electrical contractor under the name of Map Electronics. Nobody is interested. I'm bored already because he's not selling me anything. I've come on here looking for something. Here is an example of how you do do it. Are you moving to a new office or expanding your network? Do you have problems with your internet connection speed or experiencing a persistently poor phone line? Then you probably need a skilled data cable engineer. Here are five things I can do for you completely different kind of environment. So you want to try to get that kind of message across in your summary. The other thing to note with the summary is that only the first few lines show, and you have to click a thing which says read more normally. And then you can put a lot more information. So the first two or three lines needs to reach out the page, grab them by the thread and say, look, pick me. And that's what I want you to do. So I'm going to give you a few little copywriting tips here. When you're thinking about writing anything, your experience, your summary, and this applies to your website, it applies to any marketing material you make for your company or for yourself ever, use the word you and your more frequently than I, we, our, or your company name. Show the benefits of you of using you, not the features. And there's a very big difference between features and benefits. The feature might just tell you something that it does, whereas the benefit might save money, save time, make life easier. Those are the benefits. OK, so you need to focus on the benefits. So write down your features, write down the benefits of those features and lead with the benefits and sanity check to make sure you haven't accidentally put a few features into the benefits. Demonstrate that you understand the needs of your customer, their pain points, what they're going to find difficult or what they want to improve. Show your own expertise, experience and knowledge so that they can see that you're going to sort that out for them. Always, always, always use the short sentences and simple languages. Um, so think Daily Mail style of writing, not the Times, okay? So try and keep it nice and simple. And don't forget to give your contact details. You quite like them to call. 
So I'm going to give you a little example in a moment of that um, and how that works by showing you my own profile. But first, I'm just going to tell you about the social selling index. You can check how good your profile is performing. You just type into, uh, um, into Google social selling index for LinkedIn and it will then give you this information. And as you can see, I'm in the top 1% for marketeers um, in, in the world. Pretty good, 1%. I'm very happy about that. It also tells me how I can improve things, which is useful. And then I can decide, do I want to? Because sometimes you don't want to, and there's good reasons for it. Okay, so now I'm going to swap um, from sharing this screen and start sharing my um, let me just see if I can get that to work. So what I need to do now is to share a different thing, which is my personal profile. So you can see this working for real. Okay, so as you can see at the top, my latest um, photo, because I like to practice what I preach. And so there is now an up-to-date photo of me, my logo, what I do, my contact details, and a photo of me at work. Moving down the page, you can see I'm a director, so I'm senior, I'm a specialist in marketing, I do lead generation, social media, LinkedIn, website, marketing collateral, strategy, and training. So I think you've got a good idea of what I'm all about. Here, it's got what services I provide. And here's the about section, which we've just talked about. So mine talks about, are you a business owner looking for marketing that produces profitable new business and supports your sales efforts properly? So I've not talked about me, and you will see this bit here. Nowhere does it talk about me. I don't talk about me until this last sentence here. And then if you want more information, now you click to see more. And you can see there is a lot more full of search terms as well. So moving down, you can see these are my jobs at the moment. I'm a director at Royal Marketing. I'm a visiting lecturer at the University of Hertfordshire. I'm a director of KEI. I am the marketing specialist and the business advisor with Brandwin. And I'm a director at Brolic Marketing as well. And I've got various other things that I get up to. And you'll find the rest of it's now complete. So I've got education. Volunteering is really lovely to include because you're in a situation where um, um, being seen to be community orientated is a very important uh, attribute of many businesses. And finally, well, not quite finally, but further down, recommendations. You can ask for a recommendation, okay? Ever so easy to do that. And as you can see, there's a number and I've got 26. And it's good to have a few which are recent. So my last one is um, um, from September. You can put some projects in. You can talk about your awards and any publications and things you've got. So that is a very complete profile. And I would advise you to have it as complete as possible. OK, so now we're going to go on to the exciting bit, which is how do I find things? Now, I could just go into the search bar and I could type in L'Oreal like that. And it will give me some information. It will give me uh, the company page. It gives me their posts. It's got jobs and people. So if I want to look for some people, I could go down there. But it would be like looking for a needle in a haystack. L'Oreal is a big, big company. You can refine the search quite easily um, by looking at the filters here. And that's all in the free LinkedIn service. And as you can see, there are a number of options, but it's not very refined. 
So if you're serious about using LinkedIn to generate direct leads, I would advise you to consider getting Sales Navigator, which is one of its products. Not premium, and I will explain the difference later, but premium gives you very, very little for your money. Sales Navigator gives you a lot. So I'm now going to swap to Sales Navigator, and I can get to it very easily, and I would just press that button, but I have already opened it, so it's here. So let me show you how this works. For example, I know that I don't want to be traveling too far. So here are all my selection tools. I hope you can all see this. We've got geography, we've got connection levels, company. So I'm going to show you a few of them and you will see what happens. So geography, we're in Hammersmith. Here's Hammersmith coming up, England. We want to make sure we get the right one, not one in America, it's easy to do. And we can see there's 120,000 results here, because it gives me the results numbers in the top right in, um, in the Hammersmith um, borough or in the Hammersmith town. Okay, too many, 120,000 leads is far too many. So I might go to company now and I could type in L'Oreal, there's L'Oreal. So I'm now looking for people who work for L'Oreal in the Hammersmith area. And now that's gone down to 242. But I don't want just anybody at L'Oreal. Maybe I want somebody in the purchasing department so I can get onto the tender roster. Maybe I actually want to speak directly to the likely um, client. So say that client, your, your best type of um, prospect is in operations. I can now type in operations here and it will tell me there's 35 people who work in operations at L'Oreal in my area. So that is a very useful um, selection. Hmm, do I want anyone who works in operations? No, maybe I only want people who are working at a senior level. So I maybe I just want directors, seniors and VPs. So I've got that down to 27 people. Very interesting. So that selection has now appeared on the right hand side like magic. I can now start looking down to see if there's somebody I want to approach. So Nikki, Rich, head of e-commerce, e I'm not selling that kind of goods. What I want to do is to get into the supply chain. Here's somebody, Louisa and Matthew, they both look really good. So head of, of customer supply chain sounds like the right sort of person for me to be speaking to. Now I can decide to approach him potentially. And if I click on here, it allows me to connect to them, view his profile or send him a message. I can save him as a lead and I can set up a lead list in which to put him. So save to a list and I could put in here. Hammersmith opportunities um, and then I can put something about it Best. I'm just going to put it in there for now and then I can save it and now his details are in that list so I can go back to that whenever I want to it also linked in very kindly then pops up with some other suggestions of people I might be interested in adding to my lead list the other thing that I can do is I can say everybody on this list is excellent and I would like to save the list for later. So I can save my search. I can call it L'Oreal Senior in Operations. Help if I could spell, wouldn't it? There we go. And I can save that. I say I go away, I use LinkedIn for other things, I can then come back and I can look at my saved searches and there it is and now I can look at it and up it pops and it remembers all of the different search criteria I put in there. Okay, so there's lots of opportunities here to 
do lots of different searches. So I just want to um, go back to the search here and show you, you don't need to be specific about a company. You could, uh, you could just narrow it down depending on criteria. And there's a lot of criteria to choose from. So for example, I might be the sort of business which only deals with sort of medium sized so 11 to 20 to 50 employees and 51 to 200 or maybe up to 500 that sort of size business okay and I don't want to go any further than that and then in fact, I'll just take those off because I've got slightly too many there okay and then I might say okay company type I've got the option of saying it's got to be a privately owned company it could be a self-owned company and it could be a partnership and then I know that I'll be dealing with people who can easily make decisions and I might not have to go through a tender process. I could then take the view that I now want to speak only to the boss, whoever she might be, so I could actually start typing in managing director and then I could select managing director from there and that would reduce it further. I could then add CEO, which is a similar thing, and maybe owner. Now, that's still a bit too random. I might actually now want to decide which industry I want to work in. And so I can select on industry. And for example, I'm in marketing, maybe I want to work with advertising services. Now this is a list of people working in the advertising services sector in working in businesses between 11 and 200 employees that are privately held and I'm only looking at the managing director there's no senior person and they're all based in Hammersmith I can now save that search and save it for later so I think you get the general drift of how this all operates. It's a great thing to play with, but it requires a little bit of time and effort to learn how to use it. Fortunately, today's webinar is being recorded so you can go back and watch it a bit more and get a little bit more details um, for later. Okay, I'm now going to switch back to um, my presentation so that we can finish off with a few bits of information about what, what you need to do now. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to skip over this because I've shown you that bit and I've done the demo. So quickly, this is the difference between premium, free and sales navigator. And as you can see, premium gives you virtually nothing and costs nearly the same amount as Sales Navigator. So if you're going to buy anything, make sure it's Sales Navigator. You can buy it by the month, so you can just do it when you're doing a sales um, pitch, or alternatively, you can um, take the free trial for one month, get all the information you want, and then switch it off, and then return to it later. So it doesn't need to cost you an arm and a leg uh, for the entire year. Okay. I just want to quickly whiz through a couple of bits and pieces to help you with the approach to using Sales Navigator. The first thing I always do is having decided who I want to speak to is I send them a request to connect. Because once I'm connected to them, I can then talk to them through the messaging service within LinkedIn. You can do that anyway without being connected but it's more likely to get a response. So that's a really good place to start because it tells you that they're interested in you. A good percentage will ignore you. Well, you're gonna to have to find a different route to them, but at least now you've done some research and you know what their names are. So stop on LinkedIn and look at a different approach. However, if they do connect, they might connect with a message, in which case you're now in a dialogue, or they might connect but not make a message, just go, yeah, write them. Um, in which case you've got a little bit more work to do. So you follow up and you ask them about their business and you talk to them and you don't develop that relationship. It can be a bit one-sided to start with, but you have to give them something interesting. Show you're interested in them and give them things that are interesting. 
do not start at this point with a sales message, because if you do, they'll switch off and they'll disappear. Develop the conversation, no sales pitch, and then once they get interested in you, you can suggest, let's have a telephone call, a Zoom call, or a coffee. The good thing if you're looking at people in your local area is that they will be able to get out for a coffee and you won't have to drive it for an hour and a half on the off chance that they are going to become a customer. So tricks to success. First of all, you select your targets carefully. Don't spread the net too wide. Work in small batches of niche, well-defined groups and prepare your responses, what you're going to say to them in advance so you're not caught on the hop. And consistently use LinkedIn. Keep going in there and finding out if they talk to you or not and use all of the tools which are available to you. And as soon as you possibly can, take it off LinkedIn and go and meet face to face or in a Zoom call because that becomes even more personable. There are some automation tools, but I don't generally recommend them. OK. When you're talking to them, keep your communications short. And when you ask to connect, it's really important that you give them a reason to want to connect to you, not that you want to connect to them specifically. OK, so you get a lot of these. I want to increase my network. Would you be a, would you be a connection? That's not really the best way of doing it. You want to engage with them. So here's an example. I noticed from your profile that we're both based in Hammersmith and Fulham and work in similar fields. In fact, we have so many connections in common that I'm surprised we haven't met already. It would be great to be connected. So I've been open, been honest, um, and I've just put, put out a request. I might say, we could collaborate or something of that nature, if that would be appropriate. So say they connect, you want to follow up. So this is the kind of follow up I would do. Hi Phil, I thought you would be interested in this video we have just made about safety in the workplace. It would be great to have your feedback or to discuss it further. Now, if Phil now goes and watches that video, it's actually a promotional tool for my company. And he may see something in there which he thinks is great and then come back for a conversation. Or they might just come back and say, it's a great video, thank you very much. And then you now have to find something else to, to talk about. OK, so that gives you a bit of a flavour about what you can do for, to create the dialogue. And dialogue is essential. Follow up, follow up, follow up. Always the rule. OK, so posting. I'm just going to touch on posting quickly. This is a typical kind of post that we might do. As you can see, there's a lovely big picture here which draws the eye. It's my, my post, so I've got a little bit of information in here, down here, where it says alt text can be added and things. Just ignore that. This is got how a billion dollar, a, a one billion dollar organization grew their business. That's an eye catching title. I've added my um, logo and I've got a good picture. Then I've got a strong um, line at the top to try and get people engaged. And then you can go down here and you can see how many views and things I've got at that particular moment. Here is another example. Can we predict team dynamics? And what you can see here is I've got four comments. And as soon as I've got comments and I've got likes, the number of views starts going up. And the reason for this is that the more interaction, the more noise you're making, the more LinkedIn likes it and it keeps on showing it to more people. So do you remember right at the very beginning of this presentation, I said it on average shows it to between eight and 17% of your connections. How do you get from eight to 17? The way you get from eight to 17 is to try and get as many comments and likes as possible. Now, I sometimes do this by encouraging people to make a comment. So I might actually put into my um, into a comment people's names because then they get a little message to say you've been mentioned. I can put a tag for them or their company in the message. So that helps bring their attention to it. And at that point, 
they start commenting. So you can see here, I've said to Nick Hicks, there's a bit more comment above, which you can't see. I was asking his opinion and immediately I get a reply. So true. Okay, so as a result of doing that, I'm getting more interaction. The other interesting thing here is that Kurt and Gerald down here have also commented. And that's because I sent them a note saying, I've just posted on LinkedIn, please would you comment and like my post? And they went straight on and they did that. The more comments and posts you get early, the more likely it is to get to a wider audience. Okay, so here's an example of a different type of post. This is a video, which is actually running because we set it up to do that. Video content is really, really powerful for creating uh, interest and um, catching the eye. So I really encourage you to find video, which is appropriate for your business. And you can, because it's social media, take your own um, and edit it yourself using free software like Shotcut. So good posts need to be interesting to your prospects. So they're not always interested in your latest recruitment. They're not interested in the weather. They're not interested in an awful lot of things that people put out there. So what that you want to do is to give them information which is in industry-based, news, a bit of controversy, could be personal, could be funny, doesn't really matter, but it's got to be something which they want to engage with, otherwise they're not going to. So think about it from your point of view. What, what would you stop and look at about your company? And that will help you decide what needs to go out onto your LinkedIn wall. One little tip, don't share content. Always comment or like on it because LinkedIn doesn't like sharing. They've got it as a button here. You can see it, share, just here. Better to press the comment. Um, because LinkedIn doesn't want you to, it always wants you to make original content. Sharing is just sharing somebody else's old stuff. So, quick resume here. Add pictures. If you add a picture to um, a post, you'll increase the number of interactions by twofold. Add native video. That means it's not a link to a video, but the whole video is being put up there. You'll get uplift of three comments and you'll increase the number of impressions by 21 fold. And I think these statistics are getting bigger. Give it a really good title or subject line and add it into the picture because LinkedIn doesn't have a title option. Add hashtags. Now we've all seen <coughs> hashtags, you can research them. LinkedIn will suggest some. You don't want to overdo it though. If you over egg the omelette here, it will downweight it. But if you put some in, it will upweight it. So it's really important to put a few in. Add tags, that's where you're letting people know, like you saw that I had done. And to do a tag is an at sign followed by the person's name. To do a hashtag, I think you're familiar with the hashtag symbol followed by the, the word that you want to highlight. So if, for example, you've written something about energy saving, you might, or, or renewable energy, you might just put a hashtag of eco-friendly, green and environmental friendly, something like that, and that would give you a lift. Make sure it's relevant and useful. What would you read, you know? Okay, so LinkedIn's an amazing, amazing tool, and that's the important thing. It's a tool. So make sure you use it, but it will only work for you if you put the effort in. And it does require a little bit of effort. Lots of people ask me, how long do you spend on LinkedIn? And even as a professional working in this area, probably only 15 to 20 minutes a day. That being said, or a huge percentage of my business has come from LinkedIn. My biggest single client came to me via LinkedIn. My second largest ever client came because of a talk that I gave like this, realized he needed LinkedIn, called me up and asked me to come and work for him. And I worked for them for about seven years before they sold the business for a big, big, big amount of money. So this is what you want to do. You need to dress to impress, have a fabulous profile, great picture, remember. Find leads using the search engine. 
either the free one or the paid for one, both work. Develop relationship using MailWell, which is the internal messaging system. Influence through posting. And you want to be posting fairly regularly, maybe three times a week if you possibly can. Some people do as little as one, but that's really the minimum. Okay. Just said that. Link it, your profile to your company page. Research your companies. Connect to the right people. Grow your credibility. Remain top of their mind. Reach out to new people. Engage, converse, post and share. Don't use it as an advertising material. It's converse, engage. Those two are very, very important to get right. Okay, that concludes my presentation for this morning. You can see here some places where you can get um, some opportunities, some links. Uh, as I say, this is being recorded, um, so you will be able to, you don't need to write them down now, you can go up to the recording and, and get that information. Um, also, you will be, I think the uh, presentation may well be sent out too. And what I want you to do now is just think, as a result of this, what are you going to do different right now? Okay. You've listened to me all morning for our whole hour, and I really want you to take action leaving this meeting. I'd also like to draw your attention to the forthcoming webinars that we're offering. Um, a few of them have passed, but they are recorded and available for the most part on the Brand Room, uh, on the, uh, Brand Room um, website. I'll give you that uh, information as well in a moment. To sign up to any of them, you can find them on Eventbrite, okay? So bid, writing uh, bids and tenders, the circular economy, meet the buyer, fantastic opportunity, uh, introduction to bid writing and improve your bid, bid response. So those are really, really useful uh, presentations for you to have a little look at and do look at what has gone already if you need, if you want to, if that would be useful. We're also offering one-to-one um, -one support, which are two sessions of one hour each with one of our professional business advisors, Noshir. And that's available for the first 80 companies um, who want some assistance. So if you're interested in that, make sure you sign up as quickly as possible. Here's the details. Noshir is the man to um, book with. Um, and, you know, please do that. He will be very helpful with all of these things. Okay, so thank you very much for your time this morning. I hope you found that interesting. Um, I've enjoyed presenting to you, and I hope it's given you a bit of an insight into how um, LinkedIn is a, an amazing tool and will be very beneficial to you. If anybody's got any questions or anything like that, please feel free to put that in the chat um, and um, I'll be happy to, to answer. Otherwise, we have finished and we've got to the end. And thank you very much for listening.